We're uh, Scott and Paula Starker, and we're with Wycliffe Bible Translators and the Summer Institute of Linguistics. And so I'll let Paula take it over from here. <laughs> so great. Thanks for having us here tonight. And um, we just like to share about God's faithfulness and His glory in using simple people. So I'd like to uh, show the rest of our family. We have one daughter, Amanda, and she is now a senior in college and majoring in clinical psychology, going to school in California. So our story began, actually this is our wedding photo, uh, 30 years next month we'll be married. And we both grew up in homes where we went to church, but we really didn't hear the gospel. And in our teen years, we did hear the gospel and both of us came to accept Jesus and repent and want to follow him with all of our hearts. And during our college years, Scott was an engineering major and I was a nursing major. We went to Urbana. It's a huge missions conference, anybody know? And heard about Wycliffe for the first time. So this is John 3.16 in 2,000 languages of the world. And we all know that passage and it's just hard to imagine that there are 340 million people in the world that still have not one single verse in their language. So after we joined Wycliffe, we went back to Minnesota and we uh, also did our training, linguistics training. We did three semesters in linguistics and in master's levels courses, anthropology courses, intercultural communication and phonology, learning how to write alphabets out of um, the International Phonetic Alphabet. And, and then during that time, we started praying about where we should go and we heard that Mexico still had dozens of languages that still had not had, uh, had the Word of God translated. And Scott had already been to China and had studied Mandarin, just always loving languages. And so we thought, you know, let's go help finish up in Mexico and then we'll go to Asia when we're done. So we went in um, January of 1995, we went to Mexico and we met the people group down in the state of Oaxaca in uh, Coicoyan, uh, the Mixtecos de Coicoyan, and that was out in the town of Huslawaka. And they had a little church and they spoke in pure Mixtec, but they did not have God's word in their heart language. And they did not even have an alphabet. Their language wasn't written. And they could not understand that Scott was trying to write it using the International Phonetic Alphabet and trying to code switch between English and Spanish and Mixtec. So, moving on, we got started and then our miracle daughter was born after 10 years of marriage. And so our, that was our official assignment was Mixtec in uh, Coicoyan in Oaxaca, Mexico. And we we're located in a market town and Scott built our kitchen and, and we were making really great progress and we thought we'd probably be there for about maybe 10, maybe 15 more years. And then uh, we went to Minnesota and kind of our, our worlds changed overnight and kind of the unthinkable happened. It was the night before we were going back to Mexico and Scott experienced a massive stroke. And the MRI showed that he had this much brain damage, and he still does, and it affected his speech. And as a linguist who is used to easily code switching between a variety of languages, uh, it was shocking. But I will say that God's, God's grace was with us. It was in our home area, the churches, the pastors. We had to ch send the chaplains away because we had so much spiritual support, we felt guilty. <laughs> Everybody came and there was so much, uh, so much grace. And so we didn't know, but Scott had a year and a half ahead of him of therapies. So speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy. And we didn't know how this was gonna fit into God's scheme of things. Uh, to be able to get God's word into Mixtec. It was during that time that the Mexico branch invited us to come, once we we're done with the therapies, down to Catalina, because that's a translation center for the Mexico branch. And they just said, why don't you come and see what Scott's capable of doing? And so we did that. And that was 19 years ago. So 
Scott did a lot of part-time work and then just did independent projects for the branch, working on dictionaries. But bringing it to today, Scott is the webmaster and programmer of the Mexico.sil.org website and scriptureearth.org. And I serve on the fellowship team and the volunteer appreciation banquet team, the member care team, and several special projects, including first aid and CPR. And I am the AED site coordinator for um, defibrillators. We've got two defibrillators. And I direct a, um, a refugee ministry called the Karini Connection of Burmese refugees living here in Tucson. Next, the new SIL Mexico branch website. And this site is dedicated to the exploration and celebration of the many beautiful indigenous languages of Mexico. Now this site contains all of the publications that our SIL and Wycliffe colleagues work on. So that's dictionaries, uh, grammars, the phonetics, phonology, um, anthropological papers. Anything that is done linguistically about the languages goes on this site and is um, there and it's also in Spanish. And most of the hits, two thirds of the hits, or people accessing the site come through that Spanish site. So there are over 200 languages and the SIL Mexico branch website shows all of the language families and it categorizes them. You can learn a lot about the different, the stocks of the, the family structure of lang the languages. So this is a specific Nahuatl family. Uh, it is Aztec and you can see all the different cities that Nahuatl is spoken. And then this narrows into one language uh, within Nahuatl. It's a specific, and it shows the specific area where that, uh, that form of Nahuatl is spoken. And this is an archive search, so this is all the, the papers that have been written, linguistics, literacy, and educational materials, and it, you can zoom in and look at those particular studies as well. And we give all of these reports to the Mexican government. And so that's the detail there, down to the, the history of the paper, the academic paper. For so long, people were coming to us, calling us, saying, how do we find such and such a language? We heard that it was done. We heard there was a Bible a long time ago, but we can't find it. Can you help us? So many emails later, maybe two weeks later, we'd finally track down who did it based on personnel records and finally get the information. And so there is these three techie guys that said, you know, we need to do something about that, about scripture accessibility, because all this work that has been done all throughout the world uh, through Wycliffe and SIL, we need, to, we need to get it out there. And so they created a site called scriptureearth.org. And it is changing all the time, growing, and, and this has doubled just since a year ago. But as of today, there are 1,474 languages that have scripture and scripture materials on this site. And it's a very easy site. You don't need an app. You, don't, you just need the internet. You don't have to download anything. And so you just pull it up. You can even pull it up on your cell phone and, or smartphone and you find the country code. There is over 180 countries represented around the world spanning four continents. So let's say we want to find a language in Mexico and we click on Mexico and then say, okay, we want a Muzco. So we want to see if there's any scripture materials and we go to a Muzco in Guerrero, which is where the state of Acapulco is on the west coast. So you get to the site and you can see all of the things that are available. So you can read and listen to the Bible on the New Testament. You can um, watch and observe synchronized text and listen to the audio at the same time. You can read the New Testament in PDF. You can read a book from the New Testament. You can listen to the audio only. You can go to the online viewer. You can download the New Testament in a PDF form. You can download it in audio files on an MP3. And you can also download the cell phone module for Go Bible, which is Java. You can also, it's not on there, but you can also order print on demand version of the Bible and have it. You can even get it FedEx. We've tried it and you can get it the next day if you need it. Um, also, it's down below the screen. You can't see it, but also the Jesus film. You can watch that live right on this link. So there's a lot of languages. And so for a linguist who lost his speaking um, fluidity, 
God has allowed Scott to be able to maintain that communication and the integral aspect of computer programming. <laughs> and so we praise the Lord. And I just had to ask Scott, how many languages do you know that are computer ease? And so Scott is the programmer. These are programming languages. So all of this has to complexly integrate together to be able to get God's word onto their screens. Well, sometimes we have storms that come into our lives and we can't see. I think each of us have experienced those situations and we wonder, you know, where is God in the midst of this? But we, we follow in faith knowing that he's doing a mighty work. And uh, sometimes it's really beautiful when we can see God put, put the pieces together. And I have a scripture I wanted to share a few years into after the stroke and Scott, it was things were coming slowly and just not knowing what, where is this gonna go? God just really comforted me with Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 21. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen the people I have formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. I gotta give the glory to God. When God closes a door, He opens a window. And some people we've heard say that God redirected Scott from working on just one language or maybe two to working with hundreds, <laughs> stepping him back to be able to make these accessible on the internet and we just give him the glory for that and it's it's been a beautiful blessing